To help us understand a little bit more about the differences in the thermodynamic processes, let's take a look at a simple example of work done by gas. And of course, in that case, we can only compare three of the four processes because in an isovolumetric process, work is equal to zero. But let's say that we have a process where the volume is doubled by the gas, work performed is 300 joules. How do we find Q and how do we find delta U meaning heat added to the gas and the internal energy change of the gas in the situation like that for these three processes. So let's just put it side by side to get a feel for it. All right, so we know that uh, work done uh, for a isobaric process is simply equal to P times the change in the volume. But how do we find Q and how do we find delta U? Because we know that heat is added to the gas and the process is isobaric, so uh, pressure stays the same. That means Q is equal to N times C sub V times um, uh, C sub, no, not C sub V because volume doesn't say constant. It's C sub P times delta T. We also know that the change in internal energy, delta U, is equal to N C sub V delta T. And by using the uh, first law of thermodynamics, we can also say that delta U is equal to Q minus W. All right, so what that means is that W, if I solve this for W, W is equal to Q minus delta U. W is the difference between those two, and we know what that is. We know that that was equal to 300 joules. So if we subtract those two from one another, we can say that W, which is equal to Q minus delta U, is equal to N C sub P delta T minus N C sub V delta T. And then if I factor out an N and a delta T, that becomes W is equal to N times delta T times C sub P minus C sub V. And C sub V minus C sub V is equal to R. That's the gas constant. So W is equal to N R delta T by replacing C sub P minus C sub V by R. Now also remember that C sub V uh, for depending upon what gas we're dealing with and of course I should probably make that a condition in our problem. Let's say that we're dealing with a, a diatomic gas which means that in this case uh, C sub P is um, uh, let's see, C sub P would be 3 over 2 R. Well, it doesn't matter. Hang on a second. Uh, let's continue. Uh, work is equal to that. So this is equal to 300 joules. Now, how do we then from that get to Q and delta U? Now notice if I replace C sub P by, since we're diatomic, and let's split over here, in the diatomic gas, C sub P is equal to uh, not 5 over 2, but 7 over 2 R and C sub V is equal to 5 over 2 R, all right? Then we can plug that in here, and we can then say that Q is equal to N times, so I'm coming over here, C sub P is 7 over 2 R, 7 over 2 R times delta T, and delta U is equal to N times 5 over 2 R times delta T, and notice that NR delta T is equal to 300, so that means that Q would be 7 halves times 300, and delta U would be 5 halves times 300. So that would be 7 over 2 times NR delta T, and this would be equal to 5 over 2 times NR delta T, and as we discovered, NR delta T is equal to the work done, which is equal to 300 joules, so this is equal to 7 over 2 times 300 joules, and this would be equal to 5 over 2 times 300 joules, and so 7 times 3 is 21, divided by 2 is 1,050 joules, and this would be 1,500 divided by 2, or 750 joules. All right, so now we can summarize this for the isobaric process. We know that the work done is 300 joules. We know that the heat added to the gas is 1,050 joules, so since we then subtract 300 joules from 1,050 joules, that means there's 750 joules left over that we didn't use to do work, which means that the internal energy of the gas then will increase. So then going back to our, um, what we call our um, first law of thermodynamics, we could then say that in this case, delta U is 
1050 joules is equal to the heat added to the gas. Oop, 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 I got this wrong. Delta U is 750 joules, so that's equal to 750 joules um, is equal to 1050 joules minus 300 joules. So you can see that an isobaric process is relatively complicated in the fact that there, there's a very complicated relation between Q delta U and W, but as long as you keep stuck, keep uh, not stuck, but keep concentrating on the first law of thermodynamics and then working out like this, it becomes very straightforward. Isothermic process isn't that complicated at all because in that case, an isothermic process, delta U is equal to zero. And so that means, let me put a line here, that if we use the first law of thermodynamics, delta U equals Q minus W. Since in isothermic process, delta U is zero, we get zero is equal to Q minus W. And so therefore, W is equal to Q or Q is equal to W. And so if the work done is 300 joules, that means heat added to the gas is 300 joules as well. So this becomes 300 joules. Easy to find. Delta U is zero and W is 300 joules. For an adiabatic process, it's also fairly straightforward. So what happens here is that uh, Q is equal to zero, which means that delta U is equal to minus W because the Q drops out. And so that means that uh, delta U is therefore equal to minus the work, which is minus 300 joules. And so simply stated there is that the gas does 300 joules of work, but it doesn't receive any energy from the outside. So that means that all the energy has to come from within. And so the energy loss from the gas is the same as the amount of work that it did at 300 joules. And so therefore you can compare the three processes to one another and how to find the work done, the heat added or removed, and the change in internal energy for the three different kinds of processes that can do work.